I wanted to say a, a couple of words about this workshop before you go into breakout rooms. We're going to look at the Sustainable Development Goal 11, and it's a mouthful. It's called Make Cities and Human Settlements Inclusive, Safe, Resilient, and Sustainable. That's a tall order, and I want you to remember that that's what the goal is. Um, it's quite often referred to in shorthand as the cities SDG, for instance, and uh, and it's quite it's quite specific and elaborate. So um, I thought I'd quickly share screen to remind you of the material, which I'm sure you've looked at. We work with the targets and the indicators linked with the Sustainable Development Goal. It's worth saying um, what what the SDGs are. I'm sure it's not the first time you're hearing of them, but they've been around from 2015 and go until 2030. And there's 17 of them. So we're just looking at one. And, um, and they work with a number of targets that are also adaptive every four years. They revisited at the high level political forum at uh, the United Nations. I was fortunate enough to, uh, to be at uh, one of these um, meetings a couple of years ago. In fact, when SDG 11 was one of the SDGs, there are five or six that are revised every year. Um, and this is one that was revisited. So here you see the targets. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then there's three more with ABC. And the associated indicators, there's one or two indicators um, associated with each of them. And, uh, and this is something that uh, you'll use um in the in the breakout groups now the four tasks uh, the four questions that you're looking at uh, are specific to each of the groups and you'll need to use uh, use a bit Hello. of time to dig into this so the first group will will look at how can you simplify these indicators to improve global monitoring and it's a tall order because they've come about through an elaborate process um but uh, let's see how far you can get and the second group will, will consider how we can improve the coverage of some of the above targets. Don't feel like you have to go into all of them. Um, it's, it's okay if you dig into a couple. And, uh, and then, the, then the third group will consider what, through what process the, these SDG 11 metrics came about. And, uh, and it might help you to look here um, I have the link uh, in, in part of your materials. I have the link included up here, um, sustainabledevelopment.un.org slash SDG 11. So you might want to go in and click through um, the different progress and info and the targets and indicators there, for instance. And, uh, and finally, the fourth group will ask, what sort of governance are the SDG 11 metrics an example of? So um, when, when we get back to... Um, to plenary, I'd like you to go group by group and uh, and spend a few minutes discussing each of those aspects. And since there are 17 goals today, you have um, 17 minutes in your breakout groups. So uh, off we go now and see you back here in 17 minutes. Here we go. So um, so I hope. You managed to get somewhere. We've been very good at uh, making good use of these uh, short time breakout rooms. Let's start with the first group on uh, on how can you simplify these indicators to improve global monitoring. Um, okay, I'll, I'll kick it off. Uh, so um, basically we tried to discuss, uh, when looking into these indicators, we found it really a little bit hard to simplify, but from our perspective, um, uh, within our discussions, we found that some indicators look into population-based uh, sort of observations and some others basically looked into local governments, for instance. And from our perspective, uh, local governments is quite vague because it's completely different in different contexts and the structures of uh, the governments can be completely different. So uh, in some sense, it can be simplified by identifying the way to observe individuals within the local governments rather than uh, just pointing out to the local governments as a whole, which can sort of make it easier to quantify and observe uh, in different contexts context with uh, some form of comparability between the different uh, sort of observe, observed results in some sense. Uh, so we did also go into some uh, discussions about uh, the needing to use a lot of statistical data and that quantifying is an easier way to uh, sort of compare uh, large uh, 
uh, observations and and uh, and in that sense it may be easier to simplify in terms of looking into individuals rather than entities in some sense yeah if uh, anybody any one of my group think uh, thinks I've missed something they can also mention Any thoughts from uh, from anyone in, in who was in the other groups? While you're gathering thoughts, I can say that it's a bit of a a, a tricky question, really, because uh, I ask how you can simplify these indicators to improve global monitoring, and uh, and some might disagree with the premise that that you need to simplify indicators. Maybe we need to make them more complex, right? Um, but, but of course, given that there are uh, endless nuances one could uh, think of in, in terms of looking at how do you make cities inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable, I think it's also quite an impressive achievement to have boiled it down to, to 10 targets and uh, you know just over a dozen indicators. So if you couldn't come up immediately with some ways of simplifying these, um, then I guess they've done a pretty good job. Which is, which is a nice, um, nice feeling to have, if that's the case, because we do use these in many things. Um, our university has been trying to build the, the SDGs into what we do as an organization, into teaching. I know we're not the only ones. And the idea of the SDGs has also been to um, really get get into the workings of society, and that they're a bit different than the Millennium Development Goals, and there were only eight of those. And the kind of when they did some stock taking, that was, I think, part of uh, the discussion that it needs to really enter into organizational life. But I don't want to steal the thunder from uh, one of the later groups. I think we'll get into that. So. Um, is there anything somebody wants to add on the first question right now, or shall we move on? We can go ahead. Uh, so group two, you discussed how can you improve the coverage of some of the above targets? Cool, yeah. Um... So first of all, we uh, battled a bit with uh, what is meant by coverage um, and um, we came to the, or our interpretation is, uh, was that it's about how holistic are these targets in terms of the urban context, so how much do they cover? And on that, we had a discussion around whether we wanted more comprehensive targets and more targets because that becomes a lot more um, a bigger reporting burden, uh, etc. Um, and then also whether we wanted the targets to be more specific, because as you get more specific, then you also lose the local context and the ability to kind of to to apply these uh, two different contexts. So there's a kind of tension there. Um, but in in trying to think if there were more um, targets that should be included, um, we thought urban water supply um, seemed to be lacking. And um, we also thought about local food production and uh, kind of uh, including something on increased um, local food production, though noting that that might be politically sensitive in relation to trade, uh, trade agreements and I guess also cross-regional solidarity um, in a sense. Um, we also found that while they talk about inclusive, they seem to be, they don't mention minorities in specific so that there should potentially be some focus on that. Um, and then also, I mean, it's a little bit uh, on the side, but we had a discussion on the last one, I think it's 11C and the use of the term assistance in that, in that target and finding that a slightly problematic term, potentially a bit paternalistic and 
wondering about what the intentions behind that um, that uh, target uh, really is. Is there anything, uh, Nicosia and Anarika, that I missed? No, I think you covered everything what we talked about. Um, um, yeah, as we see now with the cri with the COVID-19 crisis and when we talk about resilience, I think there should, could be um, a mentioning of um, being more self, um, being more independent as a local uh, city, of being able to produce yeah, produce food or 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 energy or or yeah. I I think that is a big part of being resilient. I'm I'm curious. I, I think two things. One, getting a last point about it being sort of uh, patronizing, as I understand it, this idea of assistance. Um, the whole exercise of the SDGs um, as some kind of global metrics that that can you know um, move move society forward um, and then catalyzing action for cities. Do you did you kind of see that as inherently problematic, or was that um, was that meaningful? And then the particular framing of assistance to certain kinds of countries or cities in certain contexts rather than for instance learning from or understanding difference in a diff in a more even-handed way was that more what you, you responded to hmm. anarika do you want to help me with this one because i think <laughs> yeah um i think that's i think sid put it well um it's yeah, it, it has this top-down kind of feeling in it. Um, and yeah, we talked a little bit about Global North and Global South, how, how that plays a role, um, that these guidelines are often made in the Global, global North and then they are being um, transported into uh, global south and and what kind of implications and power structures does that um, include it's interesting Negusi, i want to just uh, uh, ask, ask you something here as well because this is uh, this sdg is about uh, cities and human settlements and uh, and i was curious whether um, in discussing improving the coverage whether it came up for for your group, um, to what extent these indicators and targets apply um, to to both in equal measure? When you read through them, did you think they were mainly for cities, or did you feel like human settlements is a very broad definition that that was also covered adequately and in a focused way? And thinking also of your example of uh, Gondor um, earlier this week, and whether for a city. Or you know, a city like that, it's not a big city, and it's a very specific kind of city. Would would these be useful um, metrics? Okay, thank you. Um, in developing country like Ethiopia, specifically Gondor City, because you know, I don't know the other world. I've been living in Ethiopia so far so my example my experience is in relation with ethiopian cities so concerning this um, metrics i think it is somewhat broad then when it comes to the specific cities for instance in gondor that i raised yesterday uh, there are some pressing issues for instance, when cities are expanding, when it is expropriating lands of surrounding communities, just they are considered as in their own terms as weeds. Just the city wanted their land, but not the people. So they are just displaced from their 
native, I mean, areas. So this um, uh, matrix doesn't include the native residents or what I can say, indigenous people, mm. or maybe termed as minorities. That's my mm. idea. Thank you. So that's really interesting. There's also a discussion around the SDGs in terms of synergies and trade-offs across different SDGs. And of course, if you look at the other ones, there's a very explicit focus on social inclusion um, that's evident and quite mm -hmm. uh, articulate. But it's interesting if you point out that it's not as uh, as incorporated within SDG 11. So um, thanks for that point. Um, and are there any any other thoughts in the room in relation to this question? Yeah, I actually wanted to comment basically about the same thing that you were just saying that looking at SDG 11 on its own without the other 17 goals might not uh, make the coverage uh, uh, given an overview about the whole coverage because it just uh, targets cities uh, and maybe uh, other points are uh, covered in other SDGs and so they are not put as indicators uh, in, in this case or in this exact case. Um, like for example uh, the, the expansions that Negocio was talking about or the uh, urban uh, water supply that Katinka raised maybe these are uh, handled in other SDGs, so they are not reflected here, but they are not reflected, which is something that to be considered in, on, in itself. It's also fascinating to consider what other kinds of uh, multinational bodies might be involved in, in metrics that could be significant. So in Ethiopia, Addis Ababa is the headquarters of the African Union, and there are potentially more similarities across African countries that might require more focused um, metrics than than might you know be represented in SDG 11 or not. But that discussion is probably similarly complex at the African Union in terms of what uh, are there are there separate metrics for that? Are there or you know can has that been equally incorporated into a process led? from a body anchored in uh, in New York and Geneva. Um, I, think, I think those are interesting uh, points to kind of keep in mind and come back to. But uh, if, we, if we move on for a moment to, um, to the next group, um, I think perhaps some of it comes up in, in response to this question, through what process did these SDG 11 metrics come about? Okay, yes. Um, so we'll, uh, my, my group discussed that um, we found that we scrolled down and that it was a, a long process that has been built on decades of work by multiple countries and the United Nations together. Um, we found out that it all, it seems it all started in 1992 at the Earth Summit in Rio, in Brazil where uh, 178 countries adopted uh, the Agenda 21. Then it started uh, evolving with several different um, events like uh, the Millennium Dec Declaration that we had the Millennium Summit in September 2000. And, and then it came the Millennium Development Goals. Um, but then some other events afterwards like the World Summit on Sustainable Development adopted um, the built on agenda 21 and uh, included emphasis on multilateral multilateral partnerships um, then some um, additional meetings international events that were adopted on but it was until 2015 that uh, that year uh, a couple of events took place, like the disaster risk reduction, um, Addis Ababa Action Agenda on financing for development, and uh, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. That finally, uh, the United Nations um, adopted these 17 SDGs, and there is uh, currently this platform for uh, with an uh, annual follow-up or review on the, um, so the, the, the ones that currently we know as um, United Nations Sustainable Development uh, Goals. Uh, 
So basically it's a long process that uh, involves a lot of uh, international commitments among countries and uh, different developments in between and um, different actors. And that's the reason we came through not only this number 11 sustainable cities and communities, but uh, on the 17 uh, other, well, 16 more that uh, try to encompass uh, and uh, care about not only human uh, beings, but other uh, also about nature. So yeah, basically that was um, our summary for discussion on this question. Others from the group who want to add something. Thank you, Patricia. Um, I think Patricia covered most of the main points that we talked about. Um, yeah, we struggled a little bit to get started with this question, um, but then found the website, <laughs> which really helps. Um, it's a uh, it and. I really like uh, the example of the SDGs. People have mixed feelings about them quite often, but I think that in if you were looking for my right, kind of in the the description to the module, I said that this is perhaps the most prominent uh, indicator on urban sustainability metrics ever, right? And and it's really perhaps the largest uh, exercise ever undertaken of trying to gather um, crowdsource inputs and come up with a set of goals that can to some extent capture such a large and complex uh, set of issues. Um, so you could say that, although I noticed the word top down came up early on, that, that this is actually the, the most prominent example of a global bottom up exercise in, uh, in coming up with metrics. And yet we see that, you know, not everybody is sort of satisfied and feels like there's equal representation. So it brings up some of these challenges of, of being able to work with metrics, um, despite the fact that the world, uh, the map is not the territory, the world is more complicated than any representation. And uh, in fact, any model has to be, uh, be reductive in some sense, otherwise uh, you, you can't have a model of something that's as complex as the thing itself. Um, so we'll, let's, let's go on with uh, the fourth question. Um, this helps us kind of think of this also in more abstract terms what sort of governance are the SDG 11 metrics an example of? Okay, so I think we discussed also uh, a lot what, uh, how do, you, do we define governance uh, in, when we talk about the SDGs, uh, whether we talk about what uh, coverage they have, uh, so it's international, local or other, or whether we talk about the indicators themselves and uh, their measurability or uh, how they are applicable on the ground. Uh, and I think what we have reached is that uh, the SDG 11 matrices have a global governance in some sense, uh, but actually we, will dis we were discussing the applicability of these matrices on local levels without uh, developing uh, specific local indicators. Um, so although some of the, of the SDG 11 matrices are measurable them, in themselves, and even the reports on the website uh, uh, have uh, developed uh, numbers, so this number decreased from so and so, for example, uh, residents of slum areas, uh, on, on local ground in countries, how can this be reflected? Uh, and this I came up with uh, the example from, from where I'm from, Egypt. Uh, based on SDGs, we've developed uh, Egypt Vision 2030, which was a very first draft of our local uh, take on uh, the SDGs and how we are planning uh, to, to implement them. Uh, however, uh, as they were a direct reflection of the SDGs, not all of them uh, proved to be applicable. So uh, of what I know, these this vision is now under revision, has been for a couple of years now, and what, uh, what they are uh, aiming with this revision is to make uh, a version that is more applicable on the ground here, uh, using maybe more local uh, experts than international ones. The point of top 
bottom or bottom up that has been raised. Uh, so that the SDGs can be applied really on the ground and have an effect. Uh, and actually, this for me really uh, puts the, the idea of top-bottom, bottom-top in, in perspective as it differs from who is talking about top-bottom or bottom-up. <laughs> so, yeah, this is, these were our thoughts about the government. Thanks, Esther. Uh, I just had another thought that um, maybe um, in, compared to the history of other measurement approaches, uh, these sustainability indicators or these SDGs don't really seem to follow a, a rather technocratic approach. What I think often such um, 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 broad measurement approaches are being accused of. And um, because they are so sensitive to the context, and I think that maybe that really share, shows some kind of a, uh, a transition in the approaches how to to measure things. That's not so. So that's, that's uh, yeah, useful reflections. I I think if I kind of try to put put a couple of adjectives to what you're describing here. Um, I, I think of it as networked governance, but also as adaptive governance. So, you know, this iterative uh, adjustment every four years, they revise the indicators and can add in new ones. And yeah, given that there's some element of network governance here, I, I think one quite singular observation um, it, at odds with the discussions we've had on this course of cities as actors that work relationally um, in concert with other cities through networks, but also sort of within within the assemblage of a city. If you look at the um, the targets and indicators, you don't find any mention of, uh, of sort of teamwork and collaboration across cities of cross learning. It's, it's quite, uh, quite singular. And I wonder with so many of us working on, on urban transformations and the next revision, the review of this, SDG 11 due in 2022. Maybe uh, there's some scope for uh, for someone to write uh, write papers that can convincingly move into incorporating a more relational understanding of how to measure uh, how cities move towards sustainability, and then we'll find out if it's uh, adaptive in practice. which is not to which is not to kind of uh, rebuke the stg i think if it makes that kind of conversation possible it's also potentially partly an artifact a function of having taken that conversation forward just by having certain metrics so that is part of the evolution of uh, metrics and our discussing it and so on were there any any thoughts on the whole exercise i think we should start wrapping this session up as well but if there's any thoughts that emerged as you were thinking through this and looking through it, um, did something come up? Had, had anyone looked very closely at the actual targets and indicators before? Uh, actually, I haven't looked at the actual targets and, targets and indicators for cities, but I have looked at other targets and indicators for other SDGs uh, before. Uh, and that's why I'm familiar with some of the other indicators. Um, from practice, uh, I've seen that they are they really uh, made a change uh, in the way people think about indicators uh, and how to address uh, the sustainable development uh, in 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 some way. Uh, I'm not sure about what's happening on on the African level as a whole, but I'm talking about Egypt as a case study on its own. So it has brought the IPCC actions for climate change together with the sustainable development uh, goals and uh, really directed people more towards uh, this um, overarching umbrella rather than um, uh, specific actions uh, that were uh, being done as part of the international uh, uh, agenda or part of the international image uh, of the country. And this, I think, is one of the successes of the SDGs uh, versus the Millennial Development Goals, as 
they were not as inclusive of other countries as the SDGs are right now. All right, if there's no, uh, no other burning questions or thoughts in the room, shall we uh, take another break, 10, 12 minutes, and uh, come back here at 11 local time for the um, videoed video session. <laughs>